Hello and welcome again. This is our second of six videos focusing on Ethernet switch administration. In the previous video, if you've already watched that, you saw us configuring speed and duplex and we talked about MDIX, medium dependent interface. In this video, we want to now start carving our switch into different virtual LANs, different VLANs, different broadcast domains. That's what a VLAN is. We'll talk about creating a VLAN, naming a VLAN, assigning ports to a VLAN, and removing ports from a VLAN. In our next video, we're going to talk about the creation of a trunk, an inter-switch connection that's going to allow a single connection to carry multiple VLANs. You see, by default, a single physical connection is only going to carry traffic for one VLAN. After that, we're going to take a look at VTP. This is going to tie in nicely with this video training because VTP is going to allow us to create a VLAN on one switch or delete or modify a VLAN on one switch and have that modification propagate throughout all of our switched infrastructure. In our fifth video, we're going to take a look at the spanning tree protocol and see how it's going to give us loop-free topologies at layer two. And finally, we're going to see how we can logically bundle multiple physical connections together into a logical ether channel connection. But again, the focus of this training video is on VLANs. And a VLAN is going to allow us to take different switch ports and assign them to different logical subnets, different logical domains, if you will. For example, maybe we have a situation much like what I've depicted on screen. We've got a building with a couple of floors and there's a couple of departments. We have an accounting department, we have a sales department. And for security, for performance reasons, maybe we want to keep the PCs in those different VLANs separate. We want them to be in separate broadcast domains, but they might exist on the same floor of a building. So it's going to be really convenient, it's going to be really economical if we could have both accounting and sales plug into the same switch on both of these floors, but we want to keep them separate. So what we can do is we can assign them to ports belonging to different VLANs. Now notice I've got a router pictured on screen as well, because if we ever wanted to send traffic between two VLANs, this is a key point, we have to route. We have to route traffic between those two VLANs. And also notice that the switches currently have a couple of physical connections interconnecting them, representing one interconnection per VLAN, because by default, a single physical connection only carries traffic for a single VLAN. We're going to see how we can enhance that in an upcoming training video, though. We're going to show you how to create a trunk which can simultaneously carry traffic for multiple VLANs. But for now, we're just going to keep it simple and take a look at how we can create a VLAN, how we can name a VLAN, how we can assign ports to the VLAN, how we can confirm the port assignments, and how we can remove ports from a VLAN. Let's go out to the live interface. As a reminder, here's the topology we were working with last time, and we've got a couple of switches interconnected. We're not going to mess with the interconnections in this lab, but we're going to pretend that we have other ports connecting out to accounting or sales PCs. Let's begin by seeing what VLANs currently exist on Switch 2. Let's do a show VLAN. That's a command we can issue on our Cisco Catalyst switch, and again, this is a Cisco Catalyst 3750 switch. There are some VLANs that are created by default that we typically don't do anything with. They have to do with FIDI, Fiber Distributed Data Interface, and Token Ring VLANs. That's what these 1002, 1003, 1004, 1005 VLANs are all about. We rarely do anything with those guys. Instead, here's the VLAN that we're interested in right now. VLAN 1. Notice that by default, all of our ports, all of our gigabit ports anyway, and our 10 gig ports, they all belong to VLAN 1, and we can see that in the output of this command. Right now it has the name of default, and currently it's active. Well, that's great. Let's say, though, that we want to assign gigabit ethernet 1 slash 0 slash 3 through 4 to the sales VLAN, and gigabit ethernet 1 slash 0 slash 5 through 6 to the accounting VLAN. Let's take a look at how we can create VLANs. Let's go into global configuration mode by saying configure terminal and we can say VLAN and we have to give numbers associated with these VLANs. Let's say that the sales VLAN is VLAN 100. We'll say VLAN 100 and we can do some documentation of what we're doing here in VLAN configuration mode. We can say this has a name of sales. It's got a name of sales. Let's create another VLAN. Let's say VLAN 
200, and we're going to say that this has the name of accounting. We've got these two different VLANs created for these different departments. By the way, we can do a show VLAN command again and see the creation of those two new VLANs. Notice that they're active. However, we don't have anything assigned to these ports. Let's see how to do that. Let's go into interface range configuration mode. Let's go into interface range for gigabit 1 slash 0 slash 3 space hyphen space 4. These are the ports that we want to belong to the sales VLAN. And let's say, first of all, that these ports are access ports. They could be trunk ports. Remember, a trunk, as we're going to discuss in a future training video, is a single connection that can carry traffic for multiple VLANs. That's not what this is. This is known as an access port. By definition, an access port belongs to one and only one VLAN. So I'm going to force this to be an access port. I'm going to say switch port mode access. And now I'm going to say what VLAN this port is assigned to, or these ports are assigned to. We'll say switch port access VLAN. And we want this to be part of the sales VLAN, which is VLAN 100. So I'll say it's part of access VLAN 100. Let's do the same thing with our other two ports. Let me just up arrow to get back to our interface range command. And we'll say for ports 5 through 6, we want those to also be access ports. And we want them to be a member of VLAN 200. Now, let's issue the show VLAN command again to make sure that those VLAN assignments have been made. And sure enough, they have. Look at this. For VLAN 100, it now contains gigabit 1 slash 0 slash 3 and slash 4. The accounting VLAN, VLAN 200, slash 5 and slash 6, that's what we wanted. Now, imagine what's happening here. If we were to plug a sales PC into gigabit 1 slash 0 slash 3 and an accounting PC into gigabit 1 slash 0 slash 5, they're in different subnets right now. They would need to have IP addressing for different subnets. And if they wanted to communicate between one another, they would have to go out and touch a router, some sort of a Layer 3 device that could make a forwarding decision based on Layer 3 IP address information. So those devices would now be in separate broadcast domains. And something that's not obvious that I'd like to point out right now is if we delete a VLAN, here's a common misconception. If I get rid of the accounting VLAN, the assumption might be that the ports that had previously belonged to the accounting VLAN, that they would just go back to the default VLAN to VLAN 1, but that's not what happens. Let me illustrate. Let's go back into global configuration mode, and I'm going to just pull the rug out from under gigabit 1 slash 0 slash 5 and slash 6. I'm going to take away their VLAN. I'm going to say, no, VLAN 200. And if I reissue the command show VLAN, where do those ports live now? Well, there is no VLAN 200 any longer. We just have 100 and 1. They don't live anywhere. Look at that. They're nowhere to be found. They're not currently assigned to any VLAN. They're sort of in limbo right now. That's a danger. So as a best practice, if you're going to delete a VLAN, you should first reassign all the ports that currently belong to that VLAN. Just so we don't leave ourselves in this state, let's put those ports back into VLAN 1. Let's go back into interface range configuration mode. Let's up arrow until we get there for 5 and 6. And I'll say switch port access VLAN 1. Now if we say show VLAN, they should now belong once again to VLAN 1. And indeed we see that they do. But if we delete a VLAN that contains ports, those ports are going to belong to no VLAN. I hope you enjoyed this video. And come back and join us for our third Ethernet Switch Administration training video, because that video is going to be on the creation of a trunk, a single connection that can simultaneously carry traffic for multiple VLANs. We'll see you back for that next time.